We're on free code camp and we're going to be doing one of the intermediate algorithm scriptings. Today, we're going to be looking at the mixing letters one. Let's click on this one. Find the missing letter in the past letter range and return it. If all letters are present in the range, return undefined. And let's look A, B, C, E. So obviously the one that's uh, missing is D and that's what it returns. Uh, if there is no missing letter like this one, it just returns undefined. So let's try to do this. I'm gonna bring this code to our editor. Erase this empty line. Now erase the return and let's see what we can do. So before we go on, I want us to talk about ASCII characters. Hopefully you guys are familiar with them, but pretty much every character in a string, uh, and this doesn't just apply for JavaScript, it applies everywhere. Every character in a string uh, is equal to a number called the ASCII. So these, these numbers is what I want us to use to tackle the, this problem. So we don't have to know the actual correlation with what number is what character. However, we know that each characters in the alphabet or such they are in sequence. See these numbers go up as the letters go up. So we want to use that to solve this. So let's go back to the question. And let's look at some, uh, these are called characters, by the way, ask your characters. Let's look at some, I'm going to call it JavaScript character functions. I just Google this right now. And I'm at this website here. And they're telling me a couple JavaScript functions that deals with character codes. And I want to check out some of these. So let's see what car code that gives us. So what is car? I'm going to cancel out the result of this. What is, um, how do we use this? We grab the string that we're interested in. And it's a method of that string. Uh, we're going to do car code at. And we give it the index. So let's try to grab the first, the zero of the index, which is lowercase a. And let's also console log the B, which is the first index. Let's see what happens here. So you get with 78, 97, uh, which is the ASCII of A, and 98, which is the ASCII of lowercase b. So this is what we're going to be using. Let's do this. I'm going to say let output is nothing for now. And we are going to find the missing letter here using a traditional for loop. So we could use a traditional for loop like this or a for of loop. Uh, in this case, I want to use a traditional loop because I am interested in the index, the index that we are on. And we have, we got to do a little bit of thinking. So what I am going to do is, let me just write this out. I What I'm going to do is I'm going to, for each element in the current index that I'm on, I want to compare it to the next element. So when I'm on A, I want to compare A to B. When I'm on B, I want to compare B to C. And when I'm on C, I want to compare C to E. But notice the last character doesn't have any element to compare to. So we don't actually want to go to the end of the character of the string. We want to go to the end of the character minus one. Uh, so in our example, C. That's the last iteration we want to get to. Because after that, we got no other characters to compare it to. So this is what I'm going to do. Notice, remember, this is from our A and B example. We have to make sure that B, the next character, is only one more than the current iteration that we're on. So let's do this. Let us say, I'm going to destructure, I'm going to extract those out into a variable. So I'm going to say current const current. Uh, what, what should I use? Current code, maybe. And I'm the way that we grab the current code is we use our string and car code at the current index. That is our current code. And the next code is string car code at i plus one. That's the next character. Now, we know that it is the next character in the alphabet 
if it's only bigger than it by one. In other words, if next code minus current code is equal to zero, then it is the next sequence. So there is no problem. However, if it's not equal, by the way, this is, um, I'm using fair code, so it looks a little weird, but pretty much what I wrote is this and this and this without the spaces. If the next code minus the current code is not equal to and not zero, but one, then we know we skipped the letter. So how do we grab the letter that we skipped? So if it's not greater than one, how we grab them is it's just one number above, one code above our current code. If it's not equal to one, that means we skipped. And so to grab the missing letter, D in this case, we just add one to the co uh, current code. So we do, uh, and we're gonna assign that to output. Output is equal to current code plus one. Now this is a problem because then output is gonna equal a number, but we don't want it to equal a number. We want it to equal the string representation of this code. So how do we get the string representation of a car code? And we do it from, with this, from car code. It's capital string from car code. We do capital string and from car code. And what code we want? We just want one code and we're gonna pass it the current code plus one. Now we got our output. So I guess we could go on and continue on. Maybe there might be more missing ones, but uh, free code count, they didn't specify if there can be more than one missing characters and if they want everything. So I'm just gonna assume that they just want the first missing character. So we don't need to continue the loop if you found one, so we could just break out of the loop and then return output. Now there is one mistake here, is if we found an output here, then there is no problem. But what if we didn't found a mistake? What if we didn't skip any characters like this example here? So we have to check to see if our output is a character or not. In other words, we wanna say if output is still what we initialized it as, which is an empty string, then we want to return undefined. Otherwise, return output. Now let's see if that works. I'm gonna run it, get nothing, because I have to console log the result of this. Try running it again, and we get D, which is the correct character. Now let me grab this example here and make sure we get undefined. Run it and we do get in the fine, so that's good. Now let's think about some ways we could refactor this code. So notice what we're doing. We are declaring it as empty string and then we're checking later. And if it's still that in uh, empty string, then we return undefined. Why don't we just set this as undefined from the beginning so that we don't need to check for this? Because we could just return the output and if it was undefined, it will stay as undefined. Let's see if that works for both of our examples. And it does. Now, another thing you can do is not initialize it at all. Because then by default, it is undefined. Let's see if that is true. Yes, that works. So let me copy this, bring this over here, and paste it in. Run the tests, and it passes. So we're going to try to tackle this function and challenge another way. Um, honestly, I can't think of any good, reasonable ways to do this. But and um, I know a way to do this using the reduce method. Uh, it's an array method. Now I highly don't recommend this. So if you don't want to, you know, if you don't want to risk getting confused, then you can just stop the video here. However, if you want to practice the reduce method, then feel free to continue on. Uh, but before we begin, I'm going to convert this to an arrow function, an ES6 arrow function. And the way that we do that is just replace that with const, set this equal to an 
arrow after our parameter. And because we only have one parameter, we could get rid of the parentheses here. Let's just make sure that this still works. I run it and it does. So uh, let me comment this part out. I am just going to return the answer. So I don't need to declare anything. I'm just going to return whatever uh, I'm going to write now. So the first thing I want to do is get the string and split it at every character instance. So what this does is it grabs the string, uh, A, B, C, D in our case, and it makes an array out of it, like so, C and D. And it split it at every single character because I told it to split it at, at just everywhere. That is what this empty string uh, means. So this is what we're dealing with now. Now that we have an array, I want to use one of the ES6 uh, methods on it called the reduce. And what reduce, let me make this a little bigger. Reduce is a method that takes an array and it reduces it to whatever we want it to. We could reduce it to a number. We could reduce it to uh, an array, another array or another object, whatever we want it to. Now, I let's check out on MDN documentation what reduce is. So let's see, read their example. The reduce method executes a reducer function that you provide on each element of the array resulting in a single output value. So this takes an array and results uh, reduces it to a single value, whatever value you want. Now, the first argument that this reduce method takes is a function. And the second argument that it takes is the initial value of our what's called the accumulator. So let's define our function first, which is the first parameter. It's gonna leave it like this. And normally I only use the first two on most situations, but here we're gonna be using all four. So let's just write them down first. Let me make it smaller actually. And I will explain what each of them are. I'm gonna call the first one ACC for accumulator. The next one is the value that we're iterating over. So of, in our case, it's like the, each of these strings. So I'm gonna just call it C, short for character. And the next one is the current index that we're on. And last one is the source array. I'm gonna call this R. So what this pretty much is, is the source of our reduce. So we are calling the reduce method on whatever this is, which happens to be this array for this ABC, ABC E, Example and sorry, this should not be a D, this is an E because there's an E here. So, if you ever want to uh, reference, have a reference here, it is just the fourth element of this reduce function, and we are going to be using every single one. Now, this accumulator value is what's called a memory variable, and it keeps track of what its value is throughout each iteration. And uh, the output, what you return from this function is what the accumulator uh, becomes. So if we say, like, let's say we return, I don't know, like one, then accumulator becomes one. And at the end of everything, what the last return was, that's what the accumulator's value is. And that's what uh, the value of this whole function becomes. And to do that though, we have to give an initial value to the accumulator. So for our instance, we want the accumulator to start out as undefined. Now, we are gonna have a similar logic to this, but we're gonna shorten it up a little bit. So instead of declaring a current code and the next code, like what we did, we're just gonna declare them in line. So let's do this. And by the way, uh, notice how here we're breaking. Why do we break here again? And again, not only that, we are also going on this for loop to the second last character. So there's not really a way to do that here. However, what we can do is this. Actually, let me just do the uh, same thing here. 
uh, let's just do this. Const current code is let's grab our current character, which is in C. We still have to use car code add. Now C is just one character, so we just need the code of that character, but that is the zero of index. So let's do that. And the next code, it's in. Um, we can't use C plus one or I plus one, whatever. We gotta grab it from this array. So array at the index I uh, I plus one, and then with uh, that itself is a string, and we gotta do. We wanna do car code at zero. Now remember, this next code might not exist. If we were at the last element, then the next code doesn't exist. So we gotta check for that in the beginning. Let's do this. If r at i plus one doesn't exist like this, then we just will remember the return of this function is the value that the accumulator is going to take. So we're just going to return itself, meaning the value doesn't change. Otherwise, we do all this. So we have this. And then if next code minus current code is not equal to one, just like below, then we want to redefine what our accumulator is. We're gonna say return, because that's how we define accumulators for the next iteration, uh, and do pretty much the same thing here. Otherwise, we don't do anything to the accumulators, so just return accumulator. Let's see if that works. Let me erase this. And it seems to work. Uh, so to shorten this a little bit more, I guess we could just, and this is gonna be super confusing. Whenever we have current code, we could just replace it with this. Here and here. And the next code, we could, our all currents, we could replace it with that. Make it like that. And again, this is not recommended, but to shorten this even more, we could, do a ternary operator. So we could say uh, return if this is true, then return accumulator. Otherwise, if this is true, then return this and finally if none of those are true then return accumulator like so and because we just have one statement inside of our output of this function this callback function we could get rid of the return and the curly brace uh, now I just want to replace it with parentheses and get rid of this return like so get rid of that semicolon and also within here this function there's just one statement this is one big statement so we could also replace these curly brace with parentheses and get rid of the return like so Get rid of this semicolon. Let's see if that works. Yep, that seems to work. So this is almost impossible to read. I don't recommend this, but this was just a practice using reduce method. Let's see if we code camp like this. And it does. Thank you guys so much for joining me again today. Today we did the missing letters on free code camp. Tomorrow we'll be checking out sorted union. So if you guys haven't already, please subscribe, please click like below and I will see you guys tomorrow.